This tutorial is ideally intended for those with some experience using Excel. Knowledge of basic formulas and formatting will be assumed throughout. To use the skills presented in this tutorial, you will need access to Microsoft Excel. The following learning objectives will be covered. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to apply conditional formatting and highlighting to tables, employ a variety of if statements to help you analyze your data, and use the VLOOKUP function to integrate data from different tables. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet that I'll be using throughout this tutorial. This spreadsheet shows two tables used during a hypothetical medical trial. In this hypothetical trial, the subjects, denoted by the subject numbers in column A, are given a blood test to determine their LDL levels. They are then either given an experimental drug, a placebo drug, or no drug. Then after 50 days, their LDL levels are tested again. We will spend the remainder of this tutorial filling in the empty cells in the upper table. The first thing I'm going to do is to fill in today's date. To do this, I'm going to click on the cell D1 and put in the formula equals today, left parentheses, right parentheses, and press enter. This will show today's date in this cell. This formula will update the date every time I open the spreadsheet. Next, I'm going to subtract the date of first treatment from today's date. This will help me to determine when it's been 50 days since treatment. To do this, I'm going to press equals D1 minus B4, and we'll see what happens. Then I will auto-complete this all the way down. As you can see, only the first one is correct and all the other ones are incorrect. Let's see why that happened. If I look at the formula in C4, it's correct, but the ones below it are incorrect. D2 minus B5, D3 minus B6. As you can see, these don't make any sense, so I'm going to redo this. This time when I enter the formula, I'm going to put the cursor next to D1 and then click F4. You'll see this puts two dollar signs around the D1. What this means is I've locked in the D1 in place so that when I drag down, it keeps D1 as the first term, as you can see here. The next thing I'm going to do is some conditional highlighting. As you recall from the design of my hypothetical experiment, I want my subjects to return after 50 days to get a follow-up LDL test. So I'm going to highlight all of these cells, and then I'm going to go over to conditional formatting, select highlight cell rules and greater than. I want to set up a rule such that any cell with a value greater than 49 will be highlighted. So I set 49 as my value. And you'll notice it indicates here it will highlight it in light red. Press OK. And you'll notice every cell with a value greater than 49 is now highlighted. In this next column, I'll do another trick that will help me remember which subjects need to come in for a follow-up LDL test. To do this, I'll make use of the IF function. First, I'm going to select the cell in which I want the function to appear, and then I'm going to enter it. Equals IF. The first thing I need to do is enter the logical test. So in this case, it's going to be C4 is greater than 49, comma. If that is true, then I want it to put the word yes in this cell. If that test is false, I wanted to put the word no in this cell. When I drag this formula down, 
you can see that it will indicate whether it's been 50 days since a subject has been in with a yes or a no. Next, I'm going to use VLOOKUP to fill in the next three columns by taking information from the table below and bringing that up to the table above. The VLOOKUP formula is a little more complicated as I will have to define four different terms. So I'll press equals, VLOOKUP, which means vertical lookup. Then in parentheses, the first thing I need to do is enter the lookup value. The lookup value is the value that the two tables share. In this instance, it's the subject number. I have subject numbers A1 through A11 in the top and bottom chart. So I'm going to enter A4 as that's my lookup value. The next thing I need to do is define the table array. This will be the table from which I'll be getting the information. So I highlight that table and then I'm going to press F4 as we did before with the uh, days since first treatment. Then comma, I have to indicate which column I wanted to draw the information from. In this case, it's the receive treatment column, which is column two. Another comma, and I want it to only bring back information that's an exact match. This is almost always what you're going to use, so I put in the word false. That means exact match. I'll press enter and then drag this down to fill in all the rest of the cells in this column and you'll can, you can see that these match up with the information in the table below. I'll now use VLOOKUP to fill in the next column, experimental versus placebo. So what I'm going to do first is to enter VLOOKUP Again, I will select the lookup value, which is the subject number. This is what connects these two tables together, comma. In this case, it'll be A4, comma, and then I'll highlight the table. Now, in this case, you just want to highlight the information in the table, not the actual column headers. And I'll press F4 to lock it in place, comma, three because I want the third column and then false enter and drag down and it fills in the rest of this column. I'll now fill in this column the before readings for the LDL blood tests using the fourth column from the table below. The next thing I'm going to do is enter in the LDL values for the subjects who have come back for their follow-up test. Next I'm going to fill in this column, which will indicate what happened to each subject's LDL value after the 50-day period. This will be done using an if statement like we did in this column. What you might notice, though, is in the previous column, there were two possible values, yes or no. Either it had been 50 days or it hadn't. In this column, there's actually three possible answers. Their LDL may have gone up, down, or even stayed the same. This will require me to enter a little more complicated if statement. This will be a nested if statement, since I have three possibilities. So I'll begin equals if. In this case, I'm going to say H4 equals G4. If that's true, then I want it to put the word same. For the false statement, I'm going to put in a second if statement. In this case, if H4 is greater than G4, if that's true, then say up, as in their LDL went up, and if that's false, say down, as in their LDL went down. I'll leave this formula up for a moment so you can see the logic of this nested if statement. So 
I'll press enter and then drag down and you'll see there are three possible answers. There's up, down, and then the same. The next thing I'm going to do is to fill in this column, which represents the percent change in LDL post-treatment. So for this, I'm going to do a simple ratio, which equals H4 minus G4. And then I'm going to divide that value by G4, so before minus after, divided by the before value. Then I will drag down to all of these and then I'm gonna right click on the highlighted group of cells go to format cells and select percentage and only one decimal point and now I can see the percent change so a minus percent change means somebody's LDL went down plus percent change meant it went up I'm now going to set up a conditional formatting rule, much like we did in column C. First thing I'm going to do is to highlight all the cells, and then I'm going to go to conditional formatting, but this time I'm going to go down to new rule. Once there, you can see a number of options. The one that I want is format only top or bottom ranked value. In this case, I want it to format only the top one. Now I select what kind of formatting I want it to do, and I'm going to have it turn it red. So the top value in this group will become red. So you can see that happened. Now I'm going to highlight these same cells again. Go to conditional formatting and set another rule. Again, I want to do format only top or bottom, but this time I'm going to do the bottom one. And the format I'm going to apply is to have it turn green. A couple things I want you to notice here is that I put two conditional formatting rules on the same set of cells. So you can put multiple rules on the same set of cells. The other thing is these are live. So if I change one of the values, now this one becomes the highest. Likewise, if I lower the LDL here, now that one becomes the lowest. The next thing I want to do is to enter a special if statement. So I'm going to highlight the cell G15, and I'm going to type equals count if. Then I have to highlight the range of cells, comma, in quotation marks, greater than 160, and then press enter. This tells me that there are seven cells in this range greater than 160. A related function is SUMIF. SUMIF is the same as COUNTIF, except that it will then total all the values in the defined cells. Now let's come back to our learning objectives. In this tutorial, we covered the application of conditional formatting and highlighting, the use of if statements to analyze data, and the use of the VLOOKUP function to integrate data from different tables. If you need more help, you can click here to see further resources as well as assignments which will help you to practice the skills covered in this tutorial. You can set up an in-person or online consultation with the tutorial's author or you can look at the Skillport modules available through your MyGW account.